What's that? Inaccuracies? No, no, this this won't do. We, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Pal, the number one place on the internet for the sweetest Amiga content. Long term viewers may have noticed a video was taken down, the OCS ECS AGA video, um, and this reshoot, uh, redux, recut if you will, um, is designed to correct a few inaccuracies that I was informed of um, by the wider Amiga community once it went out. So um, thanks for those that did comment, really appreciate it, um, and I'd, I'd rather redo this then leave that incorrect information out there so uh let's go ocs ecs and aga what are they what do they mean what are they doing here i'm going to run through them today because it can get a little confusing for people who are new to the amiga system um, and i'll try and explain it as best i can in 1985, the Amiga 1000 was released, and it was a quantum leap in computer graphics and sound, multimedia, if you will, um, compared to the, what Apple and IBM were offering at the time. Uh, bear in mind that at the time, um, you'd be getting lots of beeps and whistles from audio devices, um, barely any colours, uh, usually monochrome screens, and you'd be paying a much higher price as well. The Amiga 1000 came with what was then known as the Amiga chipset. Um, that was comprised of three individual chips, um, Agnes, Paula and Denise. Agnes was crucial for uh, dishing out chip RAM access to the custom chips as well as the CPU. So the CPU and the custom chips would all share that same cycle to actually get access to chip RAM. Um, chip RAM, I should probably mention, um, is the only RAM that's available in a desktop Amiga any Amiga actually, um, for use for video and sound. So it's quite crucial to the system because obviously the more chip RAM you have and the more you can get access to, the better effects and, and graphics and stuff that you can do. Um, fast RAM is memory that's only accessible to the CPU. Um, so basically you can store loads of stuff in, in fast RAM if you want, but if you need anything to happen with the custom chips, then that has to be copied into chip RAM for actually to do anything. Agnes also included the blitter and the copper. Um, both of these are kind of like little co-processors on the chip itself. I mean, uh, copper is actually short for co-processor. Um, the copper is what gives you that ability to have those wonderful rainbow effect screens in, in that you can alter the palette on every single line so you can give the impression of there being a lot more colors on screen than there actually are um, while the blitter um, that that kind of copied large amounts of um, memory around very quickly so fast scrolling that sort of thing uh, Paula now Paula is the audio chip primarily um, but also handles a bit of I.O. so it's, uh, it's quite an interesting little chip. Um, Paula gives um, four channels, four separate channels of uh, stereo sound, so you get two channels on the left, two channels on the right, or whichever way this is showing. <laughs> um, and they can be individual volumes um, and frequencies as well. Now Denise is the video processor. Um, Denise basically is the display chip, if you will. Um, and Denise was able to give resolutions of 320 by 256, at least in PAL regions. Um, with up to 32 colours on screen, um, or possibly even 4096 colours on screen. That's a separate mode called HAM, uh, Hold and Modify. Nothing to do with pig-based meat. Um, and basically that utilised the copper again to have to 
to do that little trick that I mentioned where it changes the palette on every line. So theoretically, you can have 4096 colors on screen, but it's all entirely dependent on the image that's being used. Um, it's also a very slow mode, so it was never used in games or anything like that. Um, there was also an extra half bright mode, EHB, um, available for the Mega chipset. This was a 64 color mode where the 32 color palette was duplicated over here and the pens from this one were half the brightness on this one. So if you had white on pen one, then pen 33 would be like a half gray of that. So it's half the luminance. Um, this was quite useful in paint packages uh, as with clever use of palette, you could achieve some quite wonderful results. Um, it was also used in a few games, including The Settlers and Lionheart. Uh, it's not immediately obvious, um, except they usually look quite a lot nicer. I'll, I'll, I'll put a, a list of the games that I know of that use EHB underneath here. Denise also handled things like um, bit planes, bit maps, um, sprites, that sort of thing. Um, so you could have a single bit plane up to 32 colors, or you could have a dual bit, bit plane where you have one in front of the other like this. So you can have that kind of like parallax scrolling effect that you get on games. Um, but then it reduces to eight colors per bit plane. So you only get about 16 colors for, for dual play fields. Now the Mega 1000 came with 256K of RAM, which was not much, um, particularly when we're talking this day and age, but obviously memory back then was incredibly expensive. Um, it would take another two years before we saw the release of the Amiga 500, um, which came with 512K um, built into it. Um, again, chip RAM only. Um, that would require um, a, a, an additional memory expansion in the trap door to bring it up to the full one meg that, um, that the machine was capable of um, addressing. Um, but I think that required uh, an updated Agnes chip, um, but more on that later. In 1990, Commodore released the Amiga 3000 and with it, the enhanced chipset, um, hence ECS. Um, the original Amiga chipset, which came with the A1000 and A500, would then become known as OCS, original chipset. So that's the difference. Um, what did ECS give? Well, it came with a new Agnes chip called Fatter Agnes. Um, the original Agnes's were able to address up to 512K of chip RAM, um, although later A500s came with something called Fat Agnes that could address one megabyte of chip RAM. Um, all ECS Megas came with Fatter Agnes, and that allowed those Megas to address up to two meg of chip RAM. Although it must be noted that none of the ECS machines actually ever came supplied with two meg; they only ever came with one meg on board. Um, as well as Fatter Agnes, there was also a new high-res Denise. Um, now Denise was able to give us a super high-res mode, uh, which was 1280 by 256, but only in four colors. Um, and I think it was also able to interlace that so you could get uh, 512 lines horizontally as well. Now, that wasn't a super useful screen mode. Um, the, the pixels were very long as a result of there being 1280 this way and only 256 this way. So um, it's not super useful. Um, ECS also gave us a flicker-free, non-interlaced 640 x 512 screen mode um, with the double scan modes. Um, these were also available in Workbench uh, as monitors, as double PAL and double NTSC, and were incredibly useful, um, mainly because they didn't flicker like crazy, uh, like interlay screen modes do. Um, so that's another big change with ECS. Now, the ECS chipset would mainly go into the A500 Plus. Um, the A3000 was a big box Amiga uh, for professional applications. Um, some call it the best Amiga. I, I've never seen one in the flesh myself, but I would, I'd love to own one. Um, and it also went into the Amiga 600, the cost cut um, Amiga that was actually more, cost more to produce than the A500 Plus. Um, and so didn't actually save them any money, which was um, classic Commodore. Anyway, on to AGA. 
AGA would arrive on the scene in 1992, courtesy of the Amiga 4000, um, the big box replacement for the A3000. Um, this came with two mega chip RAM on board, um, and the AGA chipset, Advanced Graphics Architecture. Initially, this was known as the Advanced Architecture, AA chipset, um, but when it came to Europe, they had to change that because of uh, copyright. There's, uh, there's a certain automobile association which uh, they were worried about trademarks. <laughs> so, um, AGA came in three Amigas, the Amiga 4000, the Amiga 1200, and of course the last machine from Commodore, the CD32. Alice replaced Agnes on the board, um, Lisa replaced Denise, but Paula remained Paula, uh, so sound was not upgraded for AGA. AGA was really considered like a, 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 an incremental update to the system, um, not the, the mind-blowing change that was probably needed in 1992, 1993, um, considering the advances coming out of the PC world at the time. Now, Alice and Lisa, um, they basically gave us the ability to create higher colors on screen. So now uh, it supported 8-bit bitmaps, so you could have 256 colors on screen at one time. Um, that was still limited when talking about um, scrolling bitmaps and things like that. So, um, for instance, if you go through dual playfield uh, bitmaps again, one in front of the other, like earlier, um, that was only limited to 32 colours. Um, so you're only get, kind of getting double what the original chipset could give you. Um, obviously, there now being two meg of chip RAM meant that more sprites could be more creative sprites could be added, more frames in animations, that sort of thing. Um, plus the memory bandwidth was increased to 32 bit from 16 bit, so faster memory access was in there. Um, it also came with an updated ham mode, ham eight. Um, now that we've got eight, um, eight bit color on there rather than five bit color, um, they could increase that and theoretically get access to the full 16.8 million colors of the AGA chipset, although realistically you're only really looking at uh, 262,144 colors on screen at one time. Um, HAM 8 was a bit better controlled than the original HAM 6 as it was then known. Um, it didn't quite bleed as much um, where you had, if you had certain colors next to each other, you could sometimes end up with like a, a, a bleed of color between the two, um, depending on, on how bright they were and what, what colors were actually used. Um, again, Ham 8 was quite slow, so it was never really used in games. Well, I think there's one featuring a kangaroo. The name escapes me. I'll, I'll look it up and, and we'll, we'll add a little banner thing here um, just to prove that I'm not making things up. Um, <laughs> Obviously, Ham 8 benefited things like graphics packages and Deluxe Paint uh, and Brilliance. Um, th those two applications did wonders with Ham 8. And of course, with Lightwave and the video toaster on the Amiga 4000, um, a lot of the images rendered out from that were Ham 8 mode images. So you could get very high colors that looked truly beautiful compared to the lower color stuff that um, lesser chipsets could handle. So what do these changes in chipset mean to you as an Amiga user or enthusiast? Well, AGA games won't work on ECS or OCS Amigas. So if a game specifically says AGA, not a chance, it won't work. Um, it's not just the memory re requirement, it's the actual chipset in use itself. Um, so it needs access to higher bit planes and bigger sprites and things that the AGA chipset gives. Um, saying that, Jungle Strike, um, AGA, that's that's not an AGA game. Um, if you've got two mega chip RAM in an OCS or an ECS Amiga, Jungle Strike will work. Although, why you'd want to play that above Desert Strike, I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> ECS games and OCS games. Um, I don't believe there was ever a specific ECS game released. Again, please feel free to correct me on that, um, but I haven't found any. Um, if it works on ECS, it will probably work on OCS. If it works on OCS, it will probably work on ECS. Um, the only thing I'll say is that some of the earlier games were very specific in what they needed, uh, which was a much lower kickstart in the machine. So that's, that's the ROM 
that that boots the machine gives you the the insert disc screen um, and like Amiga 500s um, the original Amiga 500s with OCS uh, usually came with um, Kickstart 1.3 um, so some games will need access to that and therefore you'll need to down kick the Kickstart on ECS machines to be able to use some OCS games. Again, it's a, it's a very small amount. Um, but I'll also go out and say it's not really an issue anymore because with the advent of WHD load, it kind of handles it all for you. So if you've got like a mass storage device in your Amiga, um, whether that's a CF card, an SD card, or an actual hard drive, and you've got WHD load installed with the relevant ROMs that are required, legally acquired, please, then you, you you just double click on the icon and WHD load sets up the required environment for that game to run. So if it needs OCS or ECS, um, it will run. Um, and again, AGA games won't work on OCS and ECS. Um, so there we go. That is the Amiga chipsets. Um, if you've got any questions about that or anything that you desperately need to correct me on, um, I think I've got most of it right, but again, I waffle sometimes and I miss bits. So um, please correct me in the comments. Um, and once more, if you've got any ideas for this channel, um, please give me a shout. Um, I, it's, I, I love the, the subjects, I love the machine. I, I could talk about it for hours. Um, not that you'd necessarily want to hear that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.